So I recently stumbled across the free one month YouTube premium trial and it also included a YouTube music premium and as a long time Spotify user using Spotify for years and believing that it was the only go to streaming service due to its popularity I decided to give YouTube music a shot. As a free trial which I could cancel at the end of the subscription duration I decided to make a switch for at least one month and if I didn't like it I could always just go back to Spotify. So here is a one month experience of switching to YouTube music as a Spotify user and if I prefer to stay a Spotify user or want to continue using YouTube music. From first impressions of installing the YouTube music app it starts off with you needing to pick out artists that you listen to or would like to follow so it can get a better understanding of your music taste. After some loading, you are greeted with a similar interface to Spotify, but in my opinion, I'd say that the YouTube music feels a bit more cleaner and organized for me. The music selection feels a lot more inviting, whilst a bit more lacklusterous and somewhat annoying on Spotify. Well, on mobile anyways. Desktop interface is quite decent, as the account will be linked to your YouTube account. If you already have created music playlists on YouTube, they will be directly located in your playlist section and available to listen. Depending on the songs, you can listen through the standard audio or if available, you can watch a music video instead. Also, as we are on the topic of playlists, I want to talk a little bit more about them. I might sidetrack a little, but just stick with me here. As I already mentioned that I believe Spotify was the only acceptable music streaming service. I never really hopped onto YouTube to listen to music, unless a new music video had dropped, or if I just ended up discovering one. So I never created any music playlists on YouTube and only had playlists on Spotify. So I simply planned to just transfer my Spotify playlist to YouTube music for a third party app known as Songshift, which came in clutch when I also decided to use Apple Music a year ago. It automatically finds and matches all your songs for each playlist for you by linking your accounts. But my first problem occurred here. They've now changed the limit to 100 song transfers and only the paid version allows unlimited songs. So now I had to transfer the rest of my songs one by one which took a lot of time. It was fine for some playlists, but a pain for others. And I know this isn't a fault with you to music or Spotify, but thought I'd mention it still, as this was an issue I faced when switching to YouTube music. And I thought it would be good to let anyone plan to make any switches know about this. So after spending some time transferring a couple of songs, my playlists were available. Well, some of them. Now, once I started listening, was there a major difference in listening quality? Nope, not really. I didn't really expect a major difference. I was just waking up each day starting up YouTube music instead of Spotify. In the setting options for both services, you can simply set the settings on both to high quality to get the best audio listening experience. Other things I've noticed is that when you click on your cue to look at your next songs, you can also view your previous played songs just above them, which isn't available on Spotify. This isn't a must have feature, are particularly necessary to me but if I do end up listening to newer playlists it's a nice touch and convenient to have. The cue and touch controls do feel a bit sensitive though which I find annoying and another thing is that sometimes when I'm reordering my songs on the cue when I click it instead of showing the current song it always shows the first song that was played at the beginning of my listening session rather than the current song being played which means I need to scroll all the way down to the current and next songs, which is a downside of the previous played songs feature. And on top of that, I always end up clicking on random songs in my queue every few seconds whilst I'm scrolling. One main thing for me, which I hated, was that YouTube Music does not have share play like on Spotify, which was a huge feature that I almost used every day. I could not get over the fact that I could no longer use it after the switch. This allows you to seamlessly transition from playing music on one device to another when connected to the same account. But with YouTube Music, you receive a pop-up saying that your music is being played on another device and sometimes it just ends up pausing the music you were listening to. I know I said that YouTube Music interface is clean, but that's mostly aimed at the homepage and library page, which is very similar to Spotify now that I look at it side by side. For the profile section, the playlist can get a bit messy and if you also access any other video playlists for your YouTube account, they will all be merged together on both YouTube Music and YouTube and there's no option to separate between them. The cube interface and lyrics interface is decent, very similar to Apple music and Spotify but I don't like the look of the lyrics interface on desktop it looks bad like terrible bad 
it just looks like a word document pasted this video is probably going to sound like i didn't enjoy using youtube music at all but i'm just highlighting some of my issues and factors that are ruining it for me so now instead let's talk about some good things that i've enjoyed about my switch and other features that i enjoy let's talk extra and special features a feature from spotify which i actually really didn't mind nor noticed that was no longer available was the crossfade feature i'm personally not a big fan of this mode slash feature and usually have it off anyways also other things like the canvas mode on spotify which displays moving visual loops which i actually find to be more distracting and unneeded so I used to keep that off on Spotify. There was one huge thing that I thought I was going to be missing out on, which was the yearly Spotify rap, which would no longer be available if I was committed to switching over to YouTube Music. But with a little exploring around a YouTube Music app, and I found out you could get a yearly recap, just like also with Apple Music. So even if I switched around services, I would still get the recap, which I always looked forward to at the end of the year. Plus YouTube Music also do seasonal recaps if you love them so much. I would guess Spotify's rap each year is a bit more fancy, and has cool fun designs compared to YouTube and Apple Music. If I'm still able to receive a recap my listening history, I don't really care nor mind what streaming service I use. More things like the music selection is far more better on YouTube as the library is way more huge with the library having songs from any channels posted from verified music channels to even non-verified and non-music channels. You can also take someone's upload of a music cover from YouTube and access it on your playlist as music. With this, there is just an enormous amount of music listening options. If there's certain songs such as unreleased, leaked or radio versions, you can most likely find it on YouTube Music rather than Apple Music or Spotify, as they aren't official or officially out. The thing with Spotify was that I tend to listen to certain specific artists and didn't really venture out my playlist, but on YouTube Music, I was a bit more open to discover other artists in the same genre or even different genres that I didn't listen to. Also with YouTube Music, Truffle Play actually feels like your songs are being fairly shuffled around, but each music listening session on Spotify felt like it was replaying the same old songs every now and then. Like I had literally forgotten some certain songs were in my playlist until I started using YouTube Music this month. Honestly, ignoring the few hiccups of YouTube Music, it really gets around and feels decent with a huge library of official and non-verified users it's quite well made and pretty nice so am i committed to fully making the switch no it's great and works mostly to my needs but there are two main faults that's the pricing and availability for pricing before the free trial I expected it to be 10.99 for the individual plan same as spotify and apple music however i later discovered that it's actually 14.99 and for availability, Spotify is almost available on like every single device from smartwatches and speakers. Whereas YouTube is very limited, I still feel like Spotify is still on top. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.